Coach, you called that timeout when Butler took a 16-8 lead early in the first half. Did you feel like it was just maybe an effort thing that was lacking for your team, and that's why you responded with you know such great defensive play? Yeah, you know, I think it was a really a, a story of, of of two things. You know, Pierre Brooks is a terrific player. I mean, if you look at his efficiency and his scoring and his shooting, he's really done it from Butler from game one until now. And uh, you know, it was almost as if we didn't mention that he was good. Uh, clearly, we did, uh, but we weren't ready to play. Uh, we weren't. We weren't ready to play. And teams that are really good, that just doesn't happen. Um, so. We had to kind of take that punch in the face, uh, kind of regroup. And then when you're at that point, you really don't know how it's going because you've just given the visiting team an abundance of energy and confidence. And, and uh, you know, they're, now they're playing with a the lead. They can negate your crowd. But to our credit, uh, we then played, I thought, pretty well, made a lot of shots in the first half. And then I thought we came out in the second half almost identical uh, to the beginning of the game. And how you know that is we fouled four times in two and a half minutes. It wasn't the officials, it was us. Uh, it was the easy way out. We weren't in position. We struggled to run back and play with great energy, great communication. And we struggled to rebound in the first four minutes of the game. And we really struggled to rebound in the first three or four minutes of the second half. A lot of their big baskets came for example, Posh Alexander, offensive rebound and one. That was the first basket of the second half for Butler. Again, to our credit, I think we put it together. Butler made a great run. And then uh, we answered. We really did. And that's, that's really to our credit. To score 85 points in the Big East game, I mean, we'll take it. Our offense is improving. But our team, in a two-hour window, in a 40-minute game, uh, we just aren't that team that's going to go, I mean, every possession for 40 minutes and play hard and with great concentration and effort. We, we do it for most, and there are times when we've come close to 40, but I thought tonight was a reflection of what I just said, and that's not to negate Butler's great run in the second half. They were really good, especially on offense, but I know our team, and I think we talk a lot about things, the readiness of both halves falls on the five starters the leaders of the team, and you have to be able to set the tone. You know, if Pierre Brooks came out of the gates and made three threes at the beginning of the game, they all contested, and one of them, man, and he had two people on him. Sometimes that happens. But one time he shot it, the ball was underneath out of bounds. Nobody matched up on him. They just threw a chest pass to him in the corner, and he shot an uncontested three. You just you can't do that. And we're fortunate tonight that our shot making – and maybe our, our confidence and our wherewithal ended up winning out. Uh, we did a lot of good things in the game. But this, this final piece here, that's when you can look out there and say, Xavier's a good team. Uh, in the Big East Conference, you cannot pick and choose how hard you play. Uh, it, it won't work. And that's, that's for UConn. Uh, I'm sure Danny Hurley talks to his guys about that same thing. And uh, that's something we have to keep working with, talking about. And, uh, you know, I'm hell-bent on trying to get us there. What did you see out of Gitas' play? Because uh, after Providence, you said, you know, he may have been settling in a little bit. And, you know, he's experiencing things for the first time. Kind of struggled in the first half tonight. And then, you know, really had some key offensive rebounds for you tonight and big three-pointer. No, I, I think Gitas is playing his best basketball of the season. And it's awesome to see. Uh, not surprised. You know, here we are in mid-January. You know, he's been in the United States for several months. Uh, he has a semester behind him. Uh, we've played a very difficult, challenging schedule. So, you know, he's virtually seen every style that you can play against as a college player. Been on the road, been at home. But I, I think the last couple of games, uh, you know, he's really settling in. He had a big three-point shot again tonight. So that's five three-point makes he's had in the last three, three games. And uh, he's rebounding the ball. And he had nine rebounds, uh, three offensive. He gives us great hustle and effort. I don't ever question Gitas's effort level and his, mind, his mindset. There are times when I don't think he's had a lot of confidence. But now that his confidence uh, is there, I think you really see some of the good things he does to help you win. Uh, same thing defensively. They tried him a number of times. And he's much better at moving his feet 
using his size and guarding drives uh, than he would have been in November. So, yeah, he's a bright spot for us, and I, I really enjoy watching his development. He works hard every day, uh, and I think he's going to give us 100% every, every time out. Coach, the offense is really settling in now. I asked uh, Des and Davion before you walked in that it's up 24 spots here in the new year, and Ken Palm after tonight's mm -hmm. game up to 60th. We know the defense has been really good all year, but how refreshing is it to see you know the way that the offense is clicking now? No, it, it is. Uh, I'm not necessarily surprised because of how many young and new players we have. You know, we've talked a lot about that, that if we can stay healthy and continue to be the team that works hard uh, in between games, that we can improve maybe at a level that some other teams can't, simply because our, our ceiling is, you know, we started so far from where we could end up. Um, we're starting to, to get quality play. Like, Davion McKnight is a big difference in our team right now. I mean, again, he played the entire game. He didn't have his normal nights, night assist-wise. But when you play 34 minutes and have one turnover, I mean, that's excellent. I think he's leading the league in assist-to-turnover ratio. But tonight he scored 20 points. So when you lead the league in assist-to-turnover, you play really tough-minded defense, and you don't turn it over like that. You know, we're getting some really quality play on, on our, our point guard position right now. Uh, I thought he was, he was excellent tonight. And, and look, I, I think Dez, 9 for 19 and 26 points, four assists, no turnovers. He was our overall best player. Uh, I still want him to be more alert, more of a tone setter, you know, being able to really pick those other four guys up and carry, carry them with him at times. And, uh, and I have to remind myself, Dez is a sophomore. Now, he's midway through his sophomore season, and this is a brand new role for him as well. But you know, Dez against Providence, and now here tonight, I would say he has a chance to be the Big East Player of the Week. Certainly in the mix, you know, based on uh, what he's done these last couple games. When you have a 19-point lead, and that disappears and you go down two points. I think a couple months ago, that might have been a negative tipping point for your team, maybe something that you don't come back from. What what do you learn about your team with the way that you were able to finish this game? For all the, the flaws along the way, you finished the game the right way. We did. You know, we had 11 turnovers. So, you know, that's right there where we want to be. Um, look, our bench guys really struggled tonight. They struggled at a level that they struggled at against Oakland, against Delaware, and as far back as November. Uh, we, we struggled tonight. The guys who started the game had to carry the torch from start to finish. That was a big reason why you see, saw those runs. Almost any time that we subbed, the game, game went the wrong direction. So, you know, we have to stay on those guys. You know, I thought Trey Green was amazing at Providence. Uh, he didn't have it here tonight. You know, I, I thought Dalen is continuing to do better. You know, he had five defensive rebounds, which is great, but I didn't think he played well. Sasha, those freshmen, uh, they have plenty of experience. We're working with them. They have plenty of game experience. We, we need more production. We just need more quality play from everybody that plays in the game. So we're after that. Hopefully we can get them to bounce back against Georgetown. But uh, to answer your question, you know, I, I thought the guys that started the game, uh, you know, they, they, they were the group that found it, settled in, got stops, made big shots, and uh, we almost had to play around our substituting here tonight. Congrats on the victory, Coach. Um, after the Delaware game, Quincy Oliveri noted that at that time he had seen that the team was without a leader. What are some ways you've seen guys step up on this team as you all have become more interconnected and um, are, are playing uh, as a unit, so much better. Yeah, you know, I think we have a leadership group, and it's it's almost obvious. You know, it's it's those that have been through the battles of college. You know, Des, a young sophomore, but the one player that's been in our program for more than one year, the only player, uh, and then really the the three incoming transfers, Abu, Davion, and Quincy. You know, those guys have played years in college basketball. They've been through the highs and lows. They set the tone in practice. They start. And they're really the, the group that we really depend on. And look, I, I think they do a great job as a group. 
it's growing and evolving. But I would say that they talk more. They look at that as their responsibility more now than maybe they would have a month ago. And, and we're going to lean on that leadership now that we're right in the heart of our season. You know, from mid-January uh, through February, this is it. This is when you've had enough practices and enough games that these are the meaningful moments each week that all of us have been looking forward to. And, and we want to be at our best here as we begin this, this stretch. Thanks,